all of my yarns, before I dye them, I tie them with a piece of cotton. It's visible because I'm acid dyeing and the cotton doesn't take the dye. It stains a little bit, but it doesn't take the dye. So it's visible in the pot, no matter what. Also, I tie it around this, the hank in such a way that it can keep the hank open. So I receive them like this. I open them up like this. I take a long piece of cotton, nice strong cotton, not too strong, but strong cotton. And tie it in a slip knot. That's pretty much it. And then I rewind it back into a, a twisty stain and soak it. These are the two yarns I'm dyeing today. The space with the nylon, silk, and silver in it. And then the two ply 100% merino. Now, one of the things I wanted to show was if you are tying your own skeins, you'll notice these ties go through the yarn in more than one place. Okay, they, they, these are figure eight ties, and they usually go through the skein twice. These I get from the mill, and there are always three per skein, and then I add the cotton top. If you're skeining the yarn, yourself, make sure to use figure eight ties and not just tying it around the yarn like this because this is still prone to tangling if this is the, the only kind of tie you have. They're unsecured, they can roll around, they can go anywhere on the skein. So if you're going to tie a skein off, this is how to do a figure eight tie. Okay, and make it sure it passes at least twice through the skein. I usually do four if it's a really big skein. But, okay, you have your skein, yes, the, the leg of the skein. Okay. Now, part it so you can see both strands. Go underneath this one, catch the top one, and pull the top one through. And then do it again. Go underneath the bottom one, catch the top one through, and then tie it off. with a knot. And then loosen it up. Now I always use cotton when I tie my skeins because it's visible even after it's dyed. Even after this was dyed, the cotton would still be bright against the dark yarn. The only problem with that is that the if it's tied too tightly it can block dye. So you want to make sure it's nice and loose once it's been tied. Make sure to loosen it up and so it's not binding. Let me do that again. Nice. Make them nice and long so it doesn't compress the skein at all. Make sure to grab only that one leg of the, the hank. Okay. Hold the two. Split it somewhere. Reach under the one underneath, catch the one on top. Let go of the one on top and pull it through. And then do it again. See that? Reach underneath the bottom one, like that. In other words, the bottom one is here, the top one is there. You're bringing the top, bottom one over the top one, pulling the top one through. 
and then tie it off. Okay. Do the okay, today we're dyeing yarn. This is 66 skeins of yarn that I well wetted through the night before in hot water with a tiny dab of detergent, just as a wetting agent. Uh, these are the crock pots. These are seven quart crock pots, the biggest ones I could get. They don't actually hold seven quarts. That last one on the end is not quite six, actually, even. Um, Citric acid, my jewelry scale for weighing the citric acid, I also use that for weighing the dye. My dyes, which I have mixed up to a 4% strength, that's 4 grams of dye per 100 milliliters of water. And I use syringes to measure the mixed dyes, and I arrange them by color. So what I do is, because crock pots hold heat well, but do not heat up very fast, I put a little bit of water in the bottom, turn it on to high, and then I go boil water on the stove. Fill it up to a little, little bit more than a half inch from the, from the top. And uh, invaluable for me is a pair of insulated rubber gloves. This is so I can stick my hands into the pots and not burn myself. The colorways, once established, are then removed, drained of too much excess water, put in a plastic bag to steam because the steam pot is contaminated with, with uh, rust and that would cause the colors to change. Canning pot with a rack in it and water for steam setting the yarn. Steam setting is done on the grill burner. All right, now I'm adding citric acid to the dye pots. I add 19 or 20 grams per pot. I only weigh it to make sure that I have enough, not, to, um, not because it's that precise. I have here my yarn. It is rinsed slightly to take off the detergent residue and it's ready to go. I leave them in the skeins like this. So for this pot, I'm making nebula today. It's a very simple colorway, very dramatic. For this one, I need yellow, Twenty milliliters, and they are all still in their twisty hanks. In this case, I'm going to leave them like this and drop them straight in, like so. Handy dandy tongs, like so. I'm going to leave these. This so one also starts with that same quantity of yellow. It's a very different colorway though. Rinse off the syringe. Three more skeins of arctic hair, rinsed, and you notice they're not dripping, they've been squeezed out, so they're not bringing a lot of water to the pot. And lay them right in. Now what this does is that the twists in the yarn block dye from penetrating deep into the hank. So the surface will dye first, and then as when the surface saturates, it'll, the dye will bond with whatever surface it can, it can reach. This gives me 
strong variation in what takes the dye and what doesn't. So depending on how I tie the skein before I put it into the water, uh, the effect will be different. It has been um, about 40 minutes because I had a lunch. And this is what the yarn looks like now. And I don't know if you can see it, but the water is still yellow. Um, but it's much paler yellow. Given how much surface area is exposed, I don't think very much more of this is going to exhaust into the fiber uh, without some help. So that's when I take it out, add new color. Again, this is, was the same amount of dye, about the same amount of yarn. It's about the same color. Now this, uh, this is going to be Red Desert. This is the different base. This is the uh, Jackrabbit base, not the Arctic Hare base. And this one. Now that is pink. I have never used this color before, so this is an experiment. All right. So we have our yellow. Handy dandy insulated rubber gloves. Now, one thing to remember when lifting hot yarn out of a dye pot is not to lift it above this point. Because if you lift it up to here, all that hot water drips down and onto your arms. It's not fun. I do it a few times every time I do this. You would think I would remember, but I don't. Okay, so I take it out. I squeeze out the water and I put it in my bin like so and I add the new color to the pot. I take out a little bit of water to rinse my syringe. And I look at my recipe, which tells me eight pink for scarlet. So here's pink. Here's scarlet. My red syringe. Pink. So I have this. On my recipe, not only do I have how much dye to use, but I have how to tie the skein. Because if you look at it, you can see how uneven the color is now. This particular colorway, very simple, I just twist it back into a skein like that. So, like that, pull it out tight like that, and then bring it together. Because it's wet, and limb, it will not be very tight. And then I like to open it up to redistribute it a little bit. And I do that with all of them. I was interrupted before when I was doing the red pass for the nebula. So I've already put the yarn into the red. And as you can see, the dye is almost all exhausted. It's only been in there for at most five minutes. It's much quicker than the yellow. But now I'm going to do the peacock purple. And the water is dark blue. I've added the dye already. It's actually more of a medium blue, bright. I have Three skeins of yarn, retwisted, and you can see how variegated or tonal, how much white there is in this. Three of them together, and exactly the same as for this one, as for the nebula, purple peacock is going straight into the pot. Merge the whole thing, 
stir it around it a little bit if I want. Since these are super wash yarns, I don't have to worry about felting. I still want to be gentle with the yarn because it's more delicate when it's hot. But I don't need to worry about felting it. I do do non-super wash yarns this way as well. I just am a little bit more careful about how I handle them. And you, I don't know if you can see that, but it's already significantly lighter. And I'm going to do this one, Red Desert. twist it or anything like that. Now, come right back to this one. Find four pots is pretty optimal. This is the color. I'm going to use 30 milliliters of sapphire. adding slip knots. So I open it up like this, and then I just decide where to add the slip knot, like so. Three, three slip knots. So I have my three slip knots, and my three skeins, And again, drop them straight into the pot. Stir it around a little. And they're already vividly different. Nebula is almost ready for its last step. This is a four-step colorway. The blue is mostly exhausted. I don't know if you can see it. And I think they look pretty nifty. Already, colors are beautifully blended. If you pull out the slip knots gently. You can see how there are still flashes of bright color along with these blues and greens, like so. I'm adding black. I'm going to go with the fresh leaves too, so I don't have to deal with In this case, this is my last knot, and I like to look at the yarn and decide on where to put it uh, because this is the last pass of color and I want to preserve certain blends so I'm looking at this and there's a little bit of white there's some greens I really like and some blues some oranges and tangerine colors there's a purple here I really like I'm move it down a little bit like this and tie it in a single overhand knot on one end of the skein. Like that. Loose, not too tight. I have these three. And this pot, dark, dark dye. just so you can get an idea of what I'm doing. See that? Stir around a bit. That is done except for exhausting and steam setting. So I'm going to leave that. 
and take a look at the purple peacock. The nebula is essentially done. As I said, it's a simple colorway, only four steps. This is purple peacock. Put green on top of yellow, or blue on top of yellow. The turquoise has not exhausted out of the pot yet, but it's not going to. Uh, Retwisted after it's gone through the yellow and the blue. And I'm sending it through a deep purple dye bath this time. Like so. You see the colors changing. is almost completely exhausted in this case. And then I've got my yarn ready to go. I've got my yellow. Because it is a desert. This time I want it to go into the pot open. Like so. If I keep the cotton ties on top, I can easily lift them out later without tangling. Now, Nebula is done. You can see, it's clear. Here's that initial knot. You can see how the color has striped through, bright in places, but about half of it's dark. Even in the dark spots, there are more than one color because there's not enough black to completely swamp out the blues and the greens and the reds. Uh, I find it's easier to rinse them if they're still kind of together, so I'm going to tie a knot in it back into it, just loosely. These are done. Put it in here. The rest of it out. The bag has no holes in it. Squeeze out some air so you can fit lots into the pot because these will expand as the steam gets hot. Make sure there are no holes in the bag. And then this goes into my canning pot and I steam it for about 15 to 20 minutes and then I let it come back down to room temperature on its own. But since I only have the one ready to go, since Nebula is such a simple colorway, I'm going to wait until I have a pot full, which is at least three bags of yarn, sometimes four, uh, before I turn it on. Purple peacock. Peacock purple. Step three. Just finished. Time to go to step four. And this is how the yarn looks so far. Into the pot. Here's Red Desert. These strings come in handy. Lift them straight out without tangling. 
is the last step for a desert. This is the color now. One last pass of red and it's done. This is how Red Desert finished. So this is an even darker purple, more in the blue family than the other one. It in fact looks almost completely blue in the pot. It does have a little bit of red going on. It's the, it has the pink. There they go. Pop. Blue. One more of blue. If you look, it's a highly variable purple right now. Lots of blue spots, a little bit of green, a little bit of burgundy going on. I want to keep this. So I tie my last knot. Three skeins of yarn, single knot. That's about, that takes it to about a halfway point on the skin. And here, Variation. A little bit of variation still on the top. And we'll open it up. And there's all that color. It's much more subtle. It's much deeper, not as bright. That's what those extra passes of dye do. And then this will go into the bag like everything else does, and it will go into the steamer for 15-20 minutes. Pretend this skein of yarn was finished dyeing, and then I put it in a bag, steamed it for 15-20 minutes, let it cool down naturally, rinsed it with cold, clear water, straight from the tap, and then I spin it out in a salad spinner um, to take out as much of the water as possible so it's not dripping. And then I ha hang this skein open like this. This is again where that piece of string is extremely useful. You see how it didn't change, it hasn't changed color at all. Or it might be a little bit tinted with pink, but it basically hasn't changed color. It's still extremely visible against the rest of the skein. It's very useful to keep it open. I hang it over a pole like this. I have these bamboo poles. And I let them air dry. The poles are out of the sun. They are open to the wind. And it lets them get quite a bit of circulation. If there's enough room on them, I like to spread out the skein like this. And it dries much faster. And that is it. That is. And just before I put it in the pot, this is what that purple turned into.